next on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday nights. There's a one football team plays football in Bell County last night. The first week of the high school football season continues. Knox Central takes on Bryan Station at the Roy Kidd Bowl and Shelby Valley opens its 2015 campaign at Franklin County. Plus, I think we're much more talented uh, for sure. The receiver uh, for it's not even close. The college football season awaits. We'll check in with Kentucky, Louisville, Union, Cumberland, UPI, UVA Wise, EKU, and Moorhead State. And a former Mountain Boy takes the national spotlight. Are you ready? We're ready. Let's start the show. I'm Riley Hall. I'm Jake Johnson. I'm Mason Hill. We're from Plaster County High School. We and are the number one team in the mountains. mountains. Sports overtime starts now. We are back. Laura Cash, I'm Jamie McCracken. This is the <laughs> Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday night. You ready to go again? Um, absolutely. New set though means I have to wear heels for a solid 40 minutes. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know about the end of the show. She did have loafers on. I tried to get her to wear them. <laughs> Tonight, not a ton of highlights because Kentucky and the rest of our local colleges don't start until next week or the week after, but, but we do have some high school football. Yeah, we do have some high school football. Let's start out at the Roy Kid Bowl. Number six, Knox Central opening the season in the Roy Kid Bowl against Bryan Station. First drive of the game, solid for the Panthers. Third and long, Jackson Stewart picks up 24 yards on the scramble for a first down. Same drive facing a fourth and two from the five. Stewart on the draw, uh, tipped up, no gain. Turnover on downs. Ensuing defender's possession, the handoff goes to Devin Key. He bounces it out to the outside, and there he goes. You know, they did the same thing to Harlan County last year. 81 yards. 81 yards. I think last year was like 80 yards for the <laughs> touchdown. Brian Station up top. Now, it may have only been three plays, but it is our Falls Auto Group drive of the night. After forcing the turnover on downs, Brian Station takes over at their own five-yard line, and the defenders needed just three plays to find pay dirt. Andre Davis found KC Carmichael for a pickup of 12 before Key took it to the house. Two plays later. And the yellow is in action again. Next, Knox possession facing another fourth and down. No one open downfield. Stewart is dropped for a loss. Not a good start for the Panthers this so far. The defenders have capitalized. Davis directed traffic out of the pocket. Get Brian Station another touchdown. That's Carmichael for 39 yards. As we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard, the Panthers shut out by Brian Station tonight. The defenders knock off the number six ranked Panthers in our mountain top 10, 49 to nothing. All right, let's head out to Frankfurt, shall we? The ninth ranked Shelby Valley Wildcats paying a visit to Franklin County. The Wildcats already down 28 to six in the second and the Flyers pour salt in the womb here. Jordan Hampton fumbles the football. Johnny Rodriguez scoops it up, returns it 37 yards for the touchdown. Flyers now leading 34 to six. Next drive for Shelby Valley. Donovan Lane sneaks it up the middle for a couple on fourth down to keep the drive alive. And Franklin County would take over following an interception here. Dewan Davis takes the handoff and is met immediately by Luke Atkinson for a loss. Later in the drive now, a field goal attempt is blocked by Austin Ellswick and recovered by Hampton Wildcats. Looking for some momentum here. Plays like it. Josh kind of missed that. Plays <laughs> certainly like this help. Chris Grunter rumbles up the middle for a huge chunk of yardage, 44 yards on the play. But once again, the drive would stall. And we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. The Wildcats fall on the road at Franklin County, 60 to six. All right, let's stay on that Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Another coverage area team goes down tonight. Rowling County puts up 55 on Clay County. Yikes. Justin Combs area in Manchester begins with a 55 to 26 loss on the road. Tough times for For our three coverage area teams playing today. But coming up next on the show. Yes, coming up next, we'll take a look at the first week of the high school football. Plus, we'll go to Lexington to check in with a fiery Mark Stoops about Kentucky's less than satisfactory scrimmage this afternoon. I didn't know that was wrong. So. He is Cameron Jones. He's the quarterback for Knott County Central, and you are watching Sports Overtime Saturday night.
Last night in the sports office, one of the things we talked about were the blowouts across the region. Not a lot of close mountain football, but we saw some really good performances. Here's a look back in this week's Lee's Famous Recipe, Hazard and Whitesburg, Two Minute Drill. Week zero kicked off with a bang. Start in Prestonsburg, the Black Cats hosting Pikeville, and on the opening kickoff, Chaplin Gerald. Go, baby! Go, baby! Go, baby! Go, baby! The former Black Cat goes 99 yards to the house. Over at Knott Central, new head coach John Paul Chapman unleashed his freshman quarterback. Cameron Jones completed 13 of 19 passes for four touchdowns. All four of them were to Dalton Cornett as Knott Central beats East Ridge. The Patriots will go to Leslie County next week and try to continue their winning ways. Side note, Knott Central hasn't had a winning season since 1997. Could this be the year? Welcome back to Somerset, Jordan Doan. The former Southwestern Warrior transfers back over to the set and scores five touchdowns in the 2015 opener over Mason County as the Briar Jumpers win their first game since November of 2013. The defending Class 5A state champions put on an offensive clinic. Pulaski County scores 64 points and wins by 38 over Jeffersonville, Indiana. The Allen Central Rebels scored 56 points and shut out the Phelps Hornets. That's the most points they've scored since August 2011 when they defeated Jenkins. That's not the only 56-0 final from Friday night. Our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week turned ugly quick. For the fourth season in a row, North Laurel beat South Laurel. And finally, the Tom Larkey era started at Perry Central with a win, his 293rd overall. This has been the Lee's famous recipe, Hazard and Whitesburg. I said my brothers, yeah. looking good tonight. Two minute drip. Good stuff there out at Pikeville. Big game boy, this is what to look forward to next Friday night, August 29th. Belfry will kick its season off. The number three team in the mountains will take on Tate's Creek at the Pike County Bowl. Also Pike Central and Shelby Valley and Phelps and Eastridge. We'll have those games live on this TV and WIMP.com. Meanwhile, Breathitt County, the Bobcats didn't play in week zero. They'll open their season up at home with Perry Central next Friday. New head coach Tom Larkey off to a 1-0 start as he went in his, in his debut uh, Perry over the past weekend. Now Breathitt County has lost four straight to Perry and has not beat the Doors since 2003. Also in action next Friday, Rockcastle County opening the season at the number 10 spot in the Mountain Top 10. They'll go to Danville for the Bob Allen Classic Pigskin Classic, I should say, and then the number one team in the Mountains, fresh off a 64-point performance and a win over Jeffersonville, Indiana, will go to Scott County to take on the Class 6A Cardinals. Well, coming up next on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday Night, more college football previews. Yeah, we talk UK, Louisville, and our boss, Josh McKinney, was at EKU with this guy. I'm like a fire hydrant, man. I mean, I'm 300 pounds. I don't move. I just, I'm a run stopper. That's just my thing. Former Somerset Briar jumper Kagan Skidmore and a bunch of other former Mountain Boys who are ready to get their season started with the EKU Colonels. You'll hear from them next. Jamie, we all have bad days, right? Some more than others. Yeah, on a bad day like yours, you would go home and watch Harry Potter. Yes, I would. You would. Well, the day of life, uh, Kentucky football head coach Mark Stoops, it was a bad day. Mm -hmm. And surely his team, after what he said to them post-game scrimmage, we are two weeks out from the season opener, and today should have been the final big scrimmage, but that may change, considering after today's performance, Stoops said the only thing he liked out of it was how the kickers kicked. Yikes! Very little energy, not a good scrimmage. Took a step back, I got to reevaluate what we're doing. It was going to be the last big scrimmage, but we may have to look at it and do it again because that, that wasn't good enough. You surprised Mark this late? In summer, yeah. With yeah. all that's on the line? I am. What do you attribute it to? Yeah. If I had those answers, we'd, we'd be winning a whole bunch of football games. Is there one thing you're especially upset about? Just the whole thing. I, I, yeah, it was the, the, the one thing that stood out to me was just the overall uh, uh, sense of urgency. Is there anything good today? Kickers kick good. <laughs>
You should go home and read Harry Potter. <laughs> Definitely. All right, with the exception of a few games, you could put Kentucky's whole schedule under key game, quote unquote, but just picking out a few, the opener against Louisiana Lafayette, where we will all get to see the new Commonwealth Stadium. That's on Saturday, September 5th. Then you can rattle off the home games with Florida, Auburn, Tennessee the, in the incoming months and city that must not be named Louisville to wrap up the regular season this Saturday after Thanksgiving. Well, the EKU Colonels will open their season against Valparaiso. Yes, our sports director Josh McKinney made the drive to Richmond to sit down with some of the players from the coverage area and preview the upcoming season. The Eastern Kentucky Colonels have been one of the more successful FCS programs in recent years, hosting a playoff game in 2014 and spending numerous weeks in the top 25. And those same expectations follow the team into 2015. They just, they just work harder this season. Our camp, we just grinded as a team. Everybody started looking really well. Everybody's starting to play as a, as a true team, and we're really trying to put like, our, self, I mean, uh, our team above self, you know what I mean? Just uh, trying to just play together more. Expected to contribute to this season's success are six players from Eastern and Southeastern Kentucky, spanning from Somerset to Pikeville. Just because you're from a small town doesn't mean that you can't go play football someplace else. These former Mountain Stars are showing it does not matter where you are from, you can have success at the Division I level. Even when you come from a small school, a small area, that there's still uh, players there, that people still play hard football. And they're very passionate and they have a high level of skill. And I hope that they see that it is possible to go to a big school and play big football. And while it may take some extra work, the only thing that can truly keep you from being a major college football prospect is yourself. Really the only, the only thing holding you down is yourself. Um, you know, we, as a mountain football player, we really have to project ourselves and, uh, you know, send our stuff to many coaches and go to camps because you know, sometimes they don't make it to all the games. But uh, the only roof you have is the one you put on yourself. So the sky's the limit for anybody. Shining light on towns all across the mountains as the light shines on them on Saturdays. With the Eastern Kentucky Colonels, Josh McKinney for the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday night. Good stuff from the boss man right there. Putting in work this Look Saturday. Key games for EKU are as follows. Season gets underway Thursday night at home against Valpo. They travel to Lexington to take on Deshaun Mobley's former team, the Wildcats. That time is yet to be determined. Tennessee Tech handed the Colonels one of their two OVC losses in 2014. EKU gets a chance to redeem themselves at home on October 8th. And then on Halloween, they travel to Jacksonville State, the winner of the OVC last year. How about the Louisville Cardinals? They are about as young as it gets heading into the 2015 season, especially on offense. You can't lose Devontae Parker at, at wide out and not feel the absence, but head coach Bobby Petrino is happy with the effort the young guys are giving in practice. All eyes right now are on the quarterback battle, and Petrino is being eh, tight-lipped about it. Well, I think we're ahead as far as our knowledge of what we want to do, you know, and, and guys that have made plays within the system, um, guys that are helping teach, you know, the, the young guys. That's one of the fun things for me to watch. And, you know, James Burgess probably stands out as much as anybody. But uh, when he's on the sideline, they're focusing in on it and trying to learn when it's not their rep. So uh, I think we're definitely ahead in that area. Um, we are, you know, young on offense. That's the one spot where you look at the wide receivers and the offensive line. You know, there's a lot of newness out there, uh, so we're teaching and learning a lot there. Um, but they're picking it up pretty fast. And eventually they'll pick a quarterback, maybe. Check out some games of interest for the Cardinals entering the 2015 season, unranked in the preseason top 25. They kick off the season traveling down to a team that is ranked in the preseason top 25, seventh ranked. Auburn, of course, Kentucky will play him later this year. Game is set for 3.30 p.m., second year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. The Cards go on the road then to face Florida State. And, of course, that non-conference game between in-state rival Kentucky set for November 28th, Saturday, after Thanksgiving at Commonwealth Stadium. Time is PBA to be announced, right? Is that what that stands for? Thank you. <laughs> I hope so. It should be true. It is. Yeah. Coming up next on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday nights, we check out the local colleges' upcoming football seasons. Yes, UVA Wise, Moorhead State, Union, U Pike, and sprinkle in a little Cumberland's track and field. That's next. 
Third year for the UVA Wise Cavaliers in the Mountain East Conference. Yeah, don't people usually say third time is the charm? Do they? I don't know, hopefully. The Cavaliers, though, can only hope for that saying. Wise has struggled since jumping to NCAA Division II two seasons ago, but morale is high entering the 2015 season. Head coach Dewey Lusk says his team has two years of experience at playing at this level, and they now know what to expect. Well, when you look back on it, um, you know, here was a team that was one and nine going into the last ball game, and you're down 21-14 with five minutes to go. You drive 80 yards and score. Your defense stops them three plays. You get the ball back, go another 70 yards and kick a field goal to win it. The kids never quit. And uh, I, I just it tells you a lot about their character and their attitude. And, uh, and even though two and nine is not what you're looking for, that last win, showing their attitude, come from behind, it's definitely been something that we've built upon uh, over the winter workout, spring practice, and uh, they're chomping at the bit to get going. They really are. Third year in the Mountain East Conference for the Cavs in Division II. Season gets underway in two weeks against Tuscan College. That's a night game, 7 p.m. kickoff. UVA finished 2-9. and nine. Their two wins coming against West Virginia State, a team they get at home this year on October 3rd. And Fairmont State, they hit the road for on October 20th. Let's jump to the Pioneer League now, shall we? The Moorhead State Eagles finished 4-8 in 2014. Third-year head coach Rob Tenier says MSU zoned in on improving their defense from last season. They simplified their scheme, and over the offseason, he's seen improvement. We've got to make plays. We, we've got to limit our, our missed tackles, and uh, we've got to be aggressive. We want to be an attacking defense, and uh, and we have simplified things. You know, we, we've we've uh, removed a lot of different calls and, and a lot of verbiage in, in our in our packaging, and so uh, we want to allow our guys to go out and play faster, uh, not over process stuff, and, and just be football players. All right, here's a few games of interest for the Eagles. They travel to James Madison first game of the season on September 5th. First home game of the season is not till September 19th. They bring in Kentucky Christian. That'll be a whiteout game. They also welcome in Davidson and Dayton for Pioneer League play. Now to the NAIA and the Mid-South Conference. The Cumberland Patriots did not have the season they planned with new head coach Matt Reimer, but they did end the year with the win, scoring 63 points over Bluefield College. The 2015 season awaits a clean slate and a year of experience. When he thinks about his first season at Cumberland's, he doesn't know where to start. That would take a while, you know, to, to tell you, really. A 3-7 and seven record taught head coach Matt Reimer a lot. We faced a lot of adversity, a lot of challenges, and just really trying to get the kids to buy into what we were doing and believe in what we were doing during those tough times. And the group of kids that we had that are still here, I think are much stronger now because of the things we went through. I have no doubt about that. And so they never budged, they never wavered. They have a great faith in what we're doing, and uh, they know that we'll prevail and that we'll be back to where we need to be. Defensively, the Patriots gave up 33 points per game in 2014. Expect a difference this year. Coach Reimer plans to take more chances with his new defensive coordinator, Steve Jewell, calling the shots. A lot of people in the Mid-South Conference, they like to throw the ball around, like uh, whether it be Campbellsville or Lindsey Wilson, schools like that. And it's, it's, a big, it's a big deal to get after them and let them know you're there. And uh, so that's our number one goal, whether it's sack him or let you know you're there every time, make him look. So. And on offense, UC will have its starting quarterback back. Junior Adam Craig missed the rest of the season after his injury in the Union game. And remember, he's the one who led the Pats to the national championship as a freshman in 2013. More consistency and just being able to have long drives and uh, really putting together solid drives with uh, less penalties, less mistakes, and uh, probably more explosive plays. Cumberland's opens the season with the number 16 team in the nation with the Campbellsville Tigers. Patriots kick off their season this Thursday, August 27th on the road against the 17th ranked Campbellsville Tigers. As I said, UC welcomes in Union this year for the Brass Lantern game. That game is set for September 26th. They'll travel to the 7th ranked Lindsey Wilson Blue Raiders in October and then a big Mid-South Conference East Division game in late October against the Unified Bears. All right, staying with the Cumberland Patriots, there's a new track and field and cross country coach in town. Pulaski County native Randy Greer takes over the program from Floyd Stroud, who retired in the spring. 
Greer ran at Cumberland's in college and says coming back to Williamsburg feels like a second home for him. And he's excited to keep moving the already successful track and field and cross country programs forward. Oh, it's huge. I mean, I think I'm only like the maybe fifth head coach in the program's history. So, you know, to me, that's a big honor to know that the program's been as, as successful as it's been. And I get the opportunity to hopefully keep that tradition going. Uh, it's been it's been a great experience. You know, Cumberland has been a place that you know has sort of been like a second home for me, and for me and my wife to have an opportunity to come back to this area, you know, to be back at my alma mater, you know, it's just a really special experience to be able to come back. Well, coming up next, both of these Mid South Conference football teams struggled on the defensive side. Of the yeah, ball. Union and U Pike, but both coaches are quick to point out their improvements over the off season. Head coach Zach Willis and the Union Bulldogs are heading into their second season together down in Barberville. Just one win on the 2014 season. Obviously, they'd like to see that change, but in a tough conference like the Mid-South, what they really want to see improvement from is their defense. When the Union College Bulldogs take the field on September 5th against Warner, they'll be in search of not only their first win of the 2015 season, but their first win since September of 2014. That being said, the excitement surrounding the football team is pretty high. I, well, the kids is high, and the you know, community seems to be excited, too. I think in Eastern Kentucky, football is important, so it's pretty high. The Bulldog offense at times operated at a high level, averaging 30.5 points per game for this season. Even in defeat, Union scored more than 40 points on three separate occasions, the highest being 56 in a home loss to Bluefield. When we ended up playing against teams that showed us um, different looks, we kind of struggled to score like Lindsey Wilson and Georgetown. So as far as those games, we know that we have to be more sharp mentally and physically. And also we have to be able to make the bigger plays that is, is easier to make when the coverages are kind of simple. Union plays in arguably one of the toughest NAI football conferences in the country, the Mid-South. Four of the Bulldogs' scheduled opponents this upcoming season are preseason ranked in the NAI Top 25. To expect to compete in those games, defense is a must. The size of the unit is probably at least 15 to 20 pounds bigger per player. Our defensive line is a lot bigger. we got two junior college All-American defensive ends in here uh, at the semester, so they spent the whole spring with us, and I think they'll make a big impact. Our inside linebackers, we got Jake Johnson back. Um, he's a, you know, obviously all Commonwealth, all conference guy, but he played on a, with a broken wrist and a badly sprained ankle all year last year. He looks a whole lot better, and he's 10 pounds heavier. Union has five home games in 2015, and their game with Warner on September 5th starts it all. All right, highlighted games for Union include first game of the season, September 5th against Warner, 1.30 kickoff time. The Brass Lantern game, September 26th in Williamsburg this year against Cumberland's game set for 7 o'clock. In the preseason NAI poll, four Mid-South Conference teams on Union's schedule were ranked. Two of those are home games, Campbellsville in September and number 7 ranked Lindsey Wilson October 3rd. Tough schedule ahead for the Bulldogs. How about the Bears? Staying in the Mid-South Conference with the U-Pike Bears. Head coach Al Holland Jr. enters his second season as the man in charge. The Bears were picked to finish second in the East in the Mid-South. High praise for a team who struggled with its identity on offense last season. Sophomore quarterback Sonny Warren, though, uh, he says this year they're more comfortable together on the field. Just knowledge, you know what I mean? The whole offense, we're a lot smoother than we were last year. And uh, I feel like we're kind of all starting to uh, mesh and get on the same page. And that, that makes me really excited because I feel like once we get all on the same page, it'll be a, a really exciting offense to watch and to play for. Wasn't Sonny like late for that interview? Is that true? A little late. A little he had already training. It's okay. okay. You heard from the offense. How about the defense now? Three of U-Pike's losses were by less than a touchdown and one game by just one point. Coach Holland says in the offseason, they focused on improving their secondary. He's happy with the progress they're making. He was also quick to point out the freshmen are coming in and giving the vets a run for their money for playing time. The, the biggest improvement and one of our weaknesses in the past is we haven't really had no depth in the secondary, and we feel like that's our strength defensively is our secondary. We move some guys around Demetrius Taylor. We move from safety to corner. 
Uh, you know, you get Terrell White back that broke an arm early in the season last year. And then you got some freshmen that have come in and, and really pushing pushing some of these older guys to, to play in a, in a, uh, in a row. And so all those guys are really pushing each other. Right, check out the key game board for the Bears. You might get a head start on the season than everyone else. They face off of Bluefield this Thursday, August 27th at home. They travel to Campbellsville on October 10th, then follow that up with a road game against the Cumberlands. A probable game of the week between Union and U Pike on Halloween night, October 31st. Actually, it's Halloween day at 1.30 p.m. And then finally wrap up the season with Mid-South Conference for Bo Georgetown at 1.30 at Hamley Field Athletic Complex. Well, next up on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday night, a local baseball player throws a no-no last night. Yes, and we will name this week's Play of the Week. Sponsored play of the week. Slim Pickens this week. We go to Cincy where former Reds great Tony Perez was honored with a statue. He also threw out the first pitch in Cincinnati's game with the D-backs. Let's go to the play now. Hey, rocking some nice shades. Reds down three runs. Jay Bruce. A bullet down the first baseline. Two runs come across the plate for the Reds. That pulls them within one. Tony Perez, Jay Bruce. Tonight's unsponsored play of the week. It's like I say he's unsponsored. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. A former Cumberland's Patriot pitcher fulfills his dream last night in Houston, Jamie. More than a dream. This thing, this thing, this guy was real good last night. Real good. The Astros taking on the Dodgers. Mike Fires, who played his college ball at the University of Cumberland's on the mound in just his third start since being traded by the Brewers last month. And here's how it went. Two and two to Justin Turner. pitches later and Mike Fires fires a no-no. 11th no-hitter in franchise history for the Houston Astros. It's also the first no-no in the history of Minute Maid Park. All right. I'm not going to ask you if you had fun yet. I got to ask. Jesse, how would you grade the show? Our director, Jesse, he gave us a B minus. So the A plus team, that's that. that. It's first game of the first show of the first year, first game of the season, you know, first for us, season, basically the yeah. same it's, thing. It's very understandable. But anyways, did you have fun? I absolutely had fun. My feet made it through the first 40 minute show by the oh. midway through. I'm going to be in mid season form. I'm really excited about it. She's going to need slippers to finish out the season. <laughs> trust me. Hey, coming up uh, next week, of course, week zero is off uh, or done with. Week one, though, we'll have a ton of football games for days as Lauren Cash likes to say for say days. I love to say that. That's obviously why I wrote that. Four Appalachian Wireless games of the week. Our man Tanner Hesburgh is going to get a lot of work in. It's the same thing with Earl. Yep, Pike County Bowl, also the Cumberland Valley Bowl out in Laurel County between South Laurel and Wayne County, then Harrison County and North Laurel. You know, you can't do a, can't paper, do a paper toss. Paper toss, but I can do this. Until next Saturday, have a good night. Enjoy your night. Good night. <laughs>